This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. <laughs> Families are our foundation of being. Maria Merkovich noticed that dysfunctions begin with family life. Everything starts with our programming with parents and relatives. When children start having trouble, she looks at the family system and beliefs that the family holds. That was Maria's purpose to name her show Family Today. Valeria Tellez interviews Maria Merkovich. She is life coach, host, and producer of the Family Today TV show an author, and a speaker. Maria is a life coach and has completed her certification for training. She earned the Inner Child Workshop certification in Arizona and has also received certificate credits with John Bradshaw, a relational certification with Pia Melody and Terrence Reel, symposium at Princeton, attended workshops in Southampton Symposium, and trained with Peak Potentials. Maria works with a system that works with people's life purpose. Maria is currently writing the book, Visions of Medjugorje, and it will be published soon. She wrote a poem, Waves of the Ocean, in a book of poetry in 2001, and is in the midst of writing another book. Maria was born in Croatia and lived in Italy prior to arriving in the USA. Before hosting and producing her own show, She hosted Mondo Italiano TV, where she translated the news from Italian to English. Later on, she had her own 20-minute segment. Maria was offered a cable TV show for a half hour. She became a host and producer of Family Today. She has many guests that appear on her show and mainly talk about family dynamics. On her live seminar, her guests were very distinguished people who offered their topics. This included Bob Proctor representative, The Secret, and many other well-known teachers. Maria completed the Warriors training where she also participated in the Spiritual Sweat Lodge. As a shaman, she is named Lion Dove. Meet Maria at Family Today with MariaMerkovich.tv. Here is the interview with Maria Merkovich. In your own words, who is Maria Mirkovic? <laughs> Maria Mirkovic is a child of God, and um, I'm a healer. I'm a life coach for families. And um, I just wanted to say this little poem because I really resonate with this. When I was doing my internal work, this is how I, I really deeply feel. And it's by Mandela. Yes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who are we to be bright, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plain small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking, so others will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. It Uh, is not in some of us, it's in all of us. It's in everyone. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. 
and it's by Mandela again. Yes, and that's how I feel. This poem really is a, a resonating with my inner, inner heart. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's so true, isn't it, that we try to please others and, and we live small, a small life. Well, small meaning that we uh, make ourselves small instead yes. of opening our light, you know, the way God is, uh, you know, meant for us to do. In speaking of that, God, who, where, and what is God to you? To me, God is my creator. He is my creator. He is life force energy. And that's a, a religious belief, Maria, or this is something from experience? It is something from experience, but it is my religious belief that uh, is a conduit to my belief system. I was born a Christian. I did uh, study the Holy Gita. I, I studied Buddhism. But I think it all comes out to one thing. It's love and the service. And God is just one God. Mm -hmm. I believe that it really helped me, even with the saints of the church, St. Francis of Assisi, for example, yeah. the mystics of the church. And I had experiences where I really went through a transformation in my life where I really resonated with the Jesus's story, mm -hmm. especially when he was betrayed. I go, oh, my God, when I was in Arizona doing my inner child work and the shadow work, of course, you know, I, I went through all of that. I said to one of the teachers there, a therapist, I said, oh, my God, I feel like Christ when he was uh, betrayed. I was betrayed by my family. Mm -hmm. And one by one, it, it really happened first one. And then I go, who else? God, please, I can't do this. You know, what did I sign up for? You know, why did I want this transformation? But Valeria, it was always in my heart. When I was a little girl, I was always different than others of my own age, my peers. They never had questions I did. So the thing is, it made me feel alone on that. You know, even as a little girl, I said, you know, where do we come from? Why are we here? There must be something because we're here. People just used to tell me, you know, what are you talking about, Maria? Yeah. You know, yeah. even as a teenager, like, <laughs> you know, look at the guys, you know, they all like you, this, that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 I can have that. But, you know, I just want to know this, you know, I was always enchanted by, you know, by all of this life. Right. Oh, wow. Yes. Life in us. So what is your perspective on the idea of being here in a human body and going through all the challenges that we go through? Is that something that from your belief system, God has created us with that purpose or this is something that just happened? Oh, that's a deep question. I believe uh, that God made us in his image and likeness and that we do go through challenges that we call challenges. In our physical world, we call them challenges, but they're learning experiences. That's what I found out in my life. I mean, when I go through a challenge, I don't say that right away, but, you know, I do see it that, uh, it, you know, when I look back, I say, oh, my God, that was a lesson. Mm, so yeah. I don't know if I, I answered your question. Yeah. No, you did. Yeah. So in a way, Maria, it's about the lessons we learn through challenge that can wake us up to the God that you speak of, to this divine energy or universe, whatever we call mm -hmm. it, this untouched. Some people call the self. I just call life itself. It's just the most beautiful thing, unconditional love. So it seems like it's trying to wake us up to that, right? Life is doing everything so we can look at it as it is, as love. Uh, we could look at it as it is. And then, like I said, you know, if we have challenges in our life, we do work them out. Some people, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but they might be in denial or not work at that. Or, or just say, oh, my God, and, you know, come from victimhood and blaming others. And why is this and why is that? Instead, I think a person that believes in God and, you know, does the inner work, I think uh, they ask questions of themselves, not to blame others or to or to be jealous or to be cruel or, or to say it's because of this that that happened. It's you ask yourself, what do I do? What do I learn from this experience? Although sometimes it's not. I mean, you know, you do feel sad or, or 
I don't know, not a victim. I don't see myself as a victim anymore. But I think that you do, you know that that challenge is serving you for a reason, a purpose. Yes, right. But when I think about life itself, I think of all these opposite sides, the duality, that we have pain and then we have joy, love and grief, the good and the bad. There is always these opposites. So it seems like it's this uh, dance So it's not really detaching from feelings or bad feelings that it is making that connection with life or with God. I really don't believe that, though. It seems like that connection with life or God just strengthens this understanding that we are here to experience everything. Yes, you're absolutely right about that. Yes, of course. Absolutely. And another question I have for you is about this um, healing work. I know a lot of people, I mean, I was not open to it for so long. I was in the victimhood mentality for so many years, for too long. I wonder why it takes so long for us to finally open up to it and do the work. Well, I think for me, it's because of my um, surroundings, my family, people that I was with. Nobody talked about this healing or or God. Well, they did talk about God, but in an abstract way, it was like God does everything. But I didn't feel it in the heart. I didn't feel it was true till it happened that I felt Jesus's presence in my life. And, and for a long time, you know, sometimes I, I procrastinate and I didn't go, you know, I didn't believe I did and I didn't. You know, there was questions. There were questions in my life till I started doing the internal work. That's when everything went upside down. Oh. And my life was completely <laughs> yeah. different. It was like, oh my God, yeah. you know, where is my, who, where is it? You know, everything was distorted. Everything was unbelievable. I, I was in so much pain. I, I couldn't bear it anymore. I, I really, that's why I resonated with Christ. Christ consciousness. And um, David Hawkins, he talks about that. He also talks about uh, power versus uh, force. And uh, I was tested. I was muscle tested in my yoga class and other teachings too, where the teacher says, you know, uh, put your hand out. And then he says, you know, think about a positive or a negative. First, the negative, he pulls the, the hand down immediately when you have your negative thought like, oh, I don't know, he did me wrong or she did me wrong or whatever negative uh, thing, thinking that you're doing at that second or that moment. And then he says, think about something healthy, something joyful, something uh, good and lovable. And, and you know what? The hand doesn't go down as much as he forces down the teacher. It doesn't go down. So that, that's, a, that's a, a very good test. I really believe in that uh, test. It makes so much sense because everything's connected. It's one system, isn't it? The body, the mind, and the spirit, as we call it. It's one system. It does yes. that feel separated, but it it's not. They're working together, always working together. Some people they need to be ready, like I had to be ready, like now even I believe in healing being this ongoing work process. So it's interesting how it's not a destination, right, Maria? Healing. It's I don't, be, I don't believe it's a destination because we are always growing and learning and we come with new challenges. At least for me, I could say that uh, I thought I was done, <laughs> but, yeah. but it's ongoing. It's ongoing. Like life is ongoing yeah. and, and mm. uh, there's new challenges. And now I know how to deal with it more than I did before. And I'm learning because of it. Now I know there's a purpose to it. Before I thought it was just suffering. Yeah, and with that in mind, let me ask you this question. What do you think the purpose of life is? Well, the purpose of life is, um, I don't know for sure for others, but um, I could say that sometimes our purpose is uh, what we do as little children, what our love was when we were little children. For example, Mm. I love to sing. Yeah. In Italy, especially, they asked me <laughs> to sing in front of an audience. And I was always called to a stage when I was a little girl in Croatia to recite. They always picked me. I was nervous, but mm-hmm. I always went. <laughs> I always uh, was excited about it. I like that. And 
for me, I think, you know, it came up in front of me. I just got things just like the TV show, for example, yeah. you know, it came to me. I wasn't necessarily looking for it. Right. And, uh, and it found me just like this book found me. I think a lot of things in life find you and then uh, you might not pay attention right away. Uh, but if you listen to your heart, because that's the, the most intelligent part in your body, I believe, and it gives so much electromagnetic fields. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at this because we're all rushing through life. We're disconnected from it sometimes. Mm, yeah. but, but when I do meditate and when I do take time to journal in the morning, I do feel things more and answers come to me. Mm -hmm. And especially breath work. I think uh, the breath work I'm doing deeper today than before. I used to do it in Dan yoga. This is a, a kind of yoga. It's Korean, I believe. And masters, they teach us about breath work and um, visualizing and connect with nature. For example, you know, to talk to trees, which I already did. I used to say, <laughs> yeah. oh, my God, what a beautiful tree. I love you. <laughs> you know, so, so everything that I was taught, I already believed in, my, in myself. So mm -hmm. it was just a confirmation for me. Anyway. Yeah. I love that, Maria. Thank you for sharing that wisdom. Thank you. The inner wisdom, spiritual wisdom, as I see it. Let's see. I have way too many questions here. How do you describe the work of internal family systems? Okay, so uh, many families are not aware of this internal family systems. And when I did go to do this uh, kind of work, for my own reasons and to become a life coach. There are defined roles in a family system, the roles of like, let's say, there's many roles, hero child, golden child, mm -hmm. uh, lost child. For example, um, a hero child overcompensates. And, and I think I facilitated uh, between the hero child and a scapegoat. So the scapegoat is, um, and of course, the lost child goes to the fantasy world. He might go to his own room and just be alone and fantasize. And, and that's, he does that uh, to have more manageability in his life and for control, definitely control too. A scapegoat is a truth seeker, a truth teller. And uh, in the family system, everybody, you know, puts blame on him or her and, um, they struggle a lot with self-worth. They feel inadequate. They um, initiate change, though. They do in the family. And uh, for that, they're blamed, too, because, wait a minute, now we are threatened by this truth teller, the one that, the, you know, uh, instigates uh, truth. So, of course, you know, they, they suffer a lot, but they become a very good people in life once they overcome their role. To say, you know, they, they, they don't feel that they are scapegoats anymore. They could uh, have their own inner power and say, look, you know, they could stand up. They have boundaries more and, um, and so on. I know you mentioned, you sent it to me in an email, that you actually took that role, right, Maria, of the scapegoat? I think that one was the one that most stood out for me. Yeah. And, and so others too, like the hero child. Because it facilitated between the hero child that overcompensates and, and the scapegoat. But I think scapegoat was the one, that the biggest one right. that I resonated with at that time in in Arizona, in Wickenburg, where I met a lot of good teachers like Pia Melody and a lot of other people that were really good at teaching this stuff. Right. How do we become aware of these roles that we play? And how did you become aware of the roles that you're playing? How did I? I, I always question things. Always, always. My mom, she blamed me, even as a little girl, stop talking. Don't ask adults questions that you're not supposed to. Instead of... Um, say how good you are, Maria, you know, to credit me for being curious, because that's a sign of an intelligence in a child. She kind of uh, bashed me. She, she wasn't good to me. But, you know, I forgave a lot of things because uh, people are what they are, and you have to accept that. So acceptance uh, in life, for me, played a big role. And it's not easy. It's not easy to forgive and also to forgive, too because you're really forgiving uh, for them and for yourself. So you could go on and create a positive uh, life. 
I love this idea, of course, everything that has to do with healing, it's attracting to me. And I see how this is so true that we are playing so many roles. And some people have called parts, which it is the same thing, isn't it, Maria? The oh, parts, yes. Parts. Right? Absolutely. How do you work with your clients? Is that online, one-on-one? Do you also work with groups and corporations? I, I do, and I do seminars and little groups. Not corporations, though. Not really. I had, the, for example, the people that, that, that wrote the, the Secret, Bob Proctor and a lot of others, they came to my seminar. And um, Dr. Oz, too, when I was... Um, having a, a talk uh, in Edgewater, New Jersey. He came in and, you know, I, I, I had the pleasure of meeting a lot of uh, well-to-do people, you know, very good people that um, share about good things. Yeah, uh, share the good news <laughs> that we can do it, <laughs> right? We can go through the healing process because I know it's not easy. Right, Maria, it takes courage to go through the healing process um, while uncovering what we are not. It's not easy at all. It really implies also losing the sense of identity with a lot of our belief systems, right? So we lose the ground in a way. And you grieve for that. You grieve that part that, that you kind of lost because it's not working for you anymore, but you still grieve it. Yeah, it's a funny... And then with with your spouse, uh, I do relational work too. I had to do the second uh, week in Wickenburg, Arizona, to do the relational work with my husband. And and I, I, you know, with me because I'm so codependent and I'm a empath too. I I do I feel people's energies and I take them in. And now I'm I'm learning not to to have more boundaries in my life. So. So with my husband, it's like I wanted to drum it into him. I wanted him to learn it as quickly as I did. <laughs> yeah. I wanted it to work immediately. <laughs> and of course, that didn't work. Uh, it, it, depleted, it depleted me from energy. Even up to date, I say, Andrew, why can't you listen? Why can't you hear me? Why, why are you, um, you know, unavailable to me at this moment? And you know what? That is a part of me that, 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 that needs to be addressed, not him. Right. It is, so, yeah, it is self-awareness, yeah, self-knowledge. It's always going deeper within, for sure, uh-huh, the healing work. Uh-huh. So your coach is for relational couples and family. Yes. So just yes. to just say that. Yes. And talk to me a little bit more about the show, the TV show that you host and produce, uh, Family Today. Yes. Uh, what would you like to know? Where can we listen to it? Can we watch on your website only, YouTube or... Well, my website is messed up. I moved in this house two years ago, so my computer's, uh, you know, I, it's it's coming in, and I have to um, complete it, and and so on. And um, so my um, my TV shows, they, there's a listing there, but I, it needs to be revised and changed. Uh, I don't have a list in front of me, but I will have it. Uh, what if I send it to you later, so mm. you could. Put it on the description box. Yes, I do, please. I do. I do have it uh, in New Jersey. Uh, I don't know the parts of New Jersey right this moment. And um, there, there was uh, in New York, uh, Florida, uh, some parts of of of, of it. I, I will send it to you. Yes, please send it to me. Thank you for asking because it is exciting. I because of Corona, I didn't um, tape my shows. Uh, recently, but now my my uh, studio, they told me it was all redone, and I'm so excited about it. There's nothing like like interviewing uh, persons or people in the studio right there in there because there's a there's a better energy, better better, and I feel that it's uh, that it's a lot better than zooming or or Skype. I never Skyped before. This is my first with you. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, there's more elements, right, of energy, more particles in there. That's for sure. If you're in person, I agree. I think so, because even my uh, my host, uh, you know, my guests, I mean, they speak their body language. Everything is caught there. So I I think there's more energy going on than when I Zoom them, I I think. 
Yeah, yeah. it is different for sure. Yes. Yeah, it's not the same. And let's see. So have the links on your podcast profile. And let's see, Marie. I have an, another question for you about the goal of the internal family systems. What is the goal with that? Is there, a, I don't want to say destination, but goal. Where are we looking to get What is the place to be when we are healed through this system? We're in a in a healthier space. I, I would think in a healthier place. Uh, for example, as a scapegoat, if if you become aware of it, uh, of course, awareness is the the beginning of healing because you are aware already now. So now you ha have to work on acting on those good things that you know. For instance, you're not, um, you know, why are you escape? Why are you the one that uh, they have to label, uh, you know, bad or, or why you have to stand up? And it's not easy. It's not. It's not an automatic. It's. I don't know if you're going to call it the journey, the journey to wholeness, the journey to self, to to really your true self, not not what they labeled you as. I, I would think that. And uh, for me, uh, there was a lot of people that alienated themselves in my life, even through that aspect. Um, estranged uh, children, even, uh, or uh, adults, I would say. They, they are, there's so many people, you think, even with the education, my daughter-in-law, for example, um, I don't know if I should say this, this just came up. <laughs> so uh, yes. people feel threatened. You could study, you could have all the, all the, I don't know, uh, diplomas, but if you don't understand what's going on inside, you don't get it. You are going to be blamed. You are going to be, so what do you do? You could just show by example, I feel. I feel if you show by example, which takes a lot of coverage, especially in a family life, uh, when you say no, how their eyes pop, how they want to disown you right away, that's, th those are lessons that are, oh my God. So that's why a lot of people, even though they know their lessons or challenges, they choose not to act on those good things that they know because they don't want to lose people in their life. This, I don't know if it's a price to pay, but you know, it's not a price if it's your own life you you want to save. Your own life, thank you, uh, because you're saving yourself from that horror of of labels, and they project that in you, and then you have to be the one showing those labels and you're not it that's not who you are that's not your true self so it's a very difficult especially in, in Croatian homes um you know they're all good people and everything but but there, there, there's a lot of um a lot of not awareness and then that's when people you know get um, blamed and uh, discounted And we all want to be liked and loved, and, but right. we want to be liked and loved for who we truly are, mm. not for what they want us to be. Right. Uh, so that, that's a very hard task. For me, uh, it was anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's a billion times to that. So true. <laughs> we want to be loved yeah, for who we really are, not for the yes. pretending to be something yes. else. Yes, and I've been pretending uh, a lot just to please others. Yeah. I, I, as a little girl, I was always pretending because that's what they wanted me to do. To please, to please, hmm. to be loved. Wow, Maria. Yeah, thank you so much for the uh, powerful and empowering message. We needed to hear this and uh, to be reminded. That's a beautiful reminder. I have a question about that is, what do you suggest that we do? Like, is that possible to compromise? I don't like the idea of compromising, although I do that as well in my family. <laughs> so uh, how do we gather the courage to really say no to, you know, to systems that don't work, you know, belief systems around us, like the family members? Um, yeah, where does it come, that courage? Where do we find it? I know you mentioned the heart earlier. Does it have to do with self-love? I think so, yes, of course, it does. Absolutely. It does. You have to have courage enough to save yourself. Otherwise, you and you cannot love unless you love yourself. So the pretense is not, it's, it's fake. So 
so I took that chance of not being loved in my family or other places just to take that risk, but to be true to myself. Mm, yeah. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being you. We need more of that. Women especially waking up oh, yes. to who mm-hmm. they are. Uh, so we're almost at the end. I do have a few more questions for you, the ending questions. But before that, talk to me about the book that you are currently writing, if I can pronounce the title, <laughs> Visions <laughs> of Medio... <laughs> you help me, please. <laughs> Medjugorje. 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 Visions right. of Medjugorje. Right. <laughs> Yeah, talk to me about the inspiration and intention of writing your book and a little bit about the topic, too. The inspiration was um, in uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina. I was, um, at that time, uh, 1990, in the 90s, late 90s. I was in a prayer group, and, and a lot of people talked about Medjugorje and, um, you know, how the happenings were. They, they were children, five children, I believe they were five who were visionaries at an early age in the 80s. They were young children, now they're adults. And uh, I said, oh my God, I go to Croatia almost every year. I'm going to pass by Bosnia Herzegovina, which is a different, you know, it's a, it's a little bit um, uh, north, I believe, to, to Susak, where I was supposed to be going for the vacation, uh, where I was born in my, uh, in my island the island where I was born in Susak, Susak, Croatia. So we, um, so I, I heard many things um, about the place and about the visionaries. And I said, you know what, let me, let me go see for myself. You know, once we pass there, we'll, we'll go. And uh, there were so many things that I saw, um, Valeria, it's unbelievable. And, uh, and I think that's what uh, scared me about even publishing the book because it's, uh, it's like, oh, my God, that was a long time ago. Was it really that way? Uh, we, um, these children saw Our Lady, the Mother of Jesus. And, of course, you have questions about that. Even as a Catholic, you say, you know, maybe they made it up or whatever. Uh, so when I went to Bosnia-Herzegovina, uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it because in the book, uh, I'll tell the whole story. When we were in the hills, in a hill, where my daughter had the experience of see, uh, seeing our Blessed Mother, uh, before that, she, uh, my mother was with us, my husband and my two ch- uh, young children. And um, they were teenagers and, and they didn't want to be there anymore. You know, at the hills, uh, it's a poor, it was a poor place. And um, they just wanted to go swimming in, in Croatia and, you know, get this over with the prayers and everything. So when we were at the hill, which we didn't have no awareness of, that they called it the apparition hill, we had no awareness because we didn't go with a group who explains, oh, this is the, this kind of hill, this is the pyramids. Um, yeah, they do have the pyramids in Bosnia too. Wow. So, but yes, very interesting. I would wow. like to go see that too. Um, so, but as, a, you know, we, as we were looking around and nothing to see, especially, uh, my daughter said, mom, I'm, I'm getting a little tired. When are we going to go to Susak? And, you know, I do want to vacation. Uh, and, um, and I go, well, soon, maybe another day, and then we'll go. What happened was she started taking pictures, and all of a sudden, she saw the sun spinning. She said, oh, my God. And then she fell on a rock where it was supposed to hurt her. It didn't. And my mother, my husband, and my son, we were powerless to go to her. We were at a place. This was a, another reality, Valeria. This is not easy for me to say. I wanted to reach out, but something in me said, don't. She was, she's supposed to see whatever she's seeing or whatever her experience is. And my mother, she was, you know, she wanted to go near her, you know. She really wanted to protect her. She couldn't move. And uh, later on, my son said when, when she had that experience, my daughter had that experience, uh, after it was over, my son said, you know, I saw the reason we couldn't move and to go to her because she was crying and weeping uh, at the sight of, you know, the sun spinning and, and everything else. She um, 
my son said, you know, we couldn't go to her because there was a pink light on top of us. And my mother goes, mm-hmm. why did we go to her? She might have gotten hurt by that rock. You know how mm-hmm. mothers are, they yeah. young uh, they're adult children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so the thing is that my daughter never cried or wept much in, in her life at all. Uh, in front of me anyway. Never. I never saw her in that uh, way. And after she um, she shared, uh, we, we just knelt down and, and started praying. And then there was uh, two, three people that passed us by. And they go, did you know that this was the apparition here? And we just all looked at each other and said, well, wait a minute. No, we didn't. We didn't come with the group. So we're just going along as, you know, as we are discovering things like where the masses, where the group of prayer group is, where Vichka, the visionary, was speaking. It all came to us. We didn't even have any any schedule with us or anything like that. But it was an experience that was marvelous, unbelievable. And, and I think these are the times that maybe the book should be released, uh, especially the mother of God, uh, Jesus saying that that we should be praying for the children. That was uh, the main message. Uh, and I think it was the, the children, how they get, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say any more about this because it's all in the book, but uh, but it was a great experience. Um, it very much sounds like. I have heard about a lot of uh, sacred places in the world. So it, this is a, a very interesting collective spiritual experience. So usually we have individual experiences, which no one experiences the same. So there's no witnesses even, but the whole family experienced it. Yes. So that yes. is fascinating. I would love to interview you about that, uh, Maria. I, I would love to. Yeah, when the book's published. If you don't have a date yet, please let me know and then we'll um, come back here and have a conversation about that. that that's a yes. very interesting conversation. And, and I welcome you to my show. Oh, yeah. My, right. Yes, my studio is in New Jersey, uh, but I, I could tape in New York, but uh, my studio is in New Jersey, uh, Spectrum Television. It used to be a Time Warner, now it's Spectrum. And um, I, I would like to invite you there if you if you could come. I would oh, love to have you. you. As a guest. Ah, that sounds like fun. Spiritual fun, meaningful fun. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes, Maria. So we'll talk a little bit more about that after the interview. What is another word for healing? Uh, I would say life force energy. To, to heal, you said, to, to heal. Yeah, another word for healing. So life force energy. I, I think yes. it's a, it's the opposite of what you have. Let's say you, your heart hurts then it's the opposite. You have joy in your heart. Mm. That's what I think it is. Yeah. So it's on the other side. <laughs> it's a matter <laughs> of being open, right? And looking further, <laughs> yes. deeper. <laughs> yes, I agree. And For my sure. last question is, what are three things you wish everyone to experience before they lose the body, before they die? Uh, I think uh, communication, clear-cut communication that they will experience and connection. Uh, love and, and joy, of course. Joy and love is almost the same. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. Yes. Thank you so much, Maria, again, for your Thank presence, you. for the inner wisdom that illuminates the conversation of what your words, what comes out of you, and for doing the healing work, for healing others. Thank you so much for being you. And before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your future book and services and products and TV shows and future projects? So you could uh, reach me at my website, but my email is mmirkovich1 at icloud.com. I do have the email here. You could uh, see me on Facebook. I have a page called Family Life and Healing. I have a page for a group of people that uh, that are sharing their experiences. And um, what else? My website, www.familytodaywithmariamirkovich.tv. Wonderful. I'll have those links on your podcast profile. Thank you so much again, Maria. Thank and we'll you. Talk soon. Bye for now. Yes, bye. Thank you, Valeria. Thank you.
Thank you for listening. To learn more about Maria Merkovich and her work, please visit familytodaywithmariamerkovich.tv. You can also contact Maria via email, mmerkovich1 at icloud.com, or reach her via phone, 201-732-2780. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.